PTO Pro represents the AI and agriculture podcast where technology shapes the future of farming. Ever tried to pick a perfectly ripe dragon fruit? It's way harder than it sounds, right? Oh, yeah. Today we're diving into some cutting-edge research that uses AI to basically take all the guesswork out of pitaya harvesting. Okay. We're talking about a study from August 2024, um, GSE YOLO, a lightweight and high precision model for identifying the ripeness of pitaya, dragon fruit, based on the Yulav aid improvement, mm -hmm. fresh out of the Horticulture Journal. You're really piquing my curiosity, I have to admit. Oh, it's fascinating stuff. Yeah. Buckle up. Imagine you're a farmer in China, one of the world's biggest pitaya producers. Right. You've got thousands of these dragon fruits growing. Yeah. And you need to know exactly when to pick them for peak ripeness. It's a logistical nightmare. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, this has been a highly labor-intensive process. People would have to inspect each fruit individually, relying on experience and, you know, a trained eye. And even then, it's not a perfect system. Absolutely. It's subjective. What one person considers perfectly ripe, another might think, eh, it needs a few more days on the vine, you know? Yeah. And here's the kicker. Unlike some fruits that give you those clear visual cues, yeah, Bataya dot kinds well, and he keeps you guessing. It really does. Throughout its growth cycle, Bataya changes color, it changes shape, add in real-world farm conditions, right. changing light, fruits hitty behind leaves. Oh, yeah. You've got a real challenge on your hands. It's like a Where's Waldo of perfectly ripe fruit. Chuckles. But that's where this research comes in. Okay. These researchers trained an AI to be a Bataya ripeness pro. It's quite ingenious, really. What? They started by creating this massive data set of Pattaya images. Okay. Over 2,700 of them, each carefully categorized by ripeness level, bud, immature, semi-mature, and mature. It's like showing the AI thousands of flashcards. Right. But instead of vocabulary words, it's ripe, not quite ripe, and definitely not ripe. Chuckles. And they used this data to train a powerful AI model called Yolov 8. Okay. Think of it as a supercharged image recognition software. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. But what's really fascinating is they didn't just stop there. They actually fine-tuned Yelavayan, made some clever tweaks to make it even better at this specific task. Let's talk about those tweaks. One of the key ones they use is called Spepalin. This is where it gets really interesting. Remember how we talked about Pattaya growing in clusters? Yeah. That makes it tough to analyze individual fruits, especially when they're bunched up together. Yeah. SP, SP Palin helps the AI overcome this by uh, distinguishing individual fruits, even amidst the chaos of a crowded branch. So it's like giving the AI the ability to differentiate between what's a single fruit and what's just a jumble of dragon fruit scales. Exactly. That's pretty amazing. But they didn't stop there, did they? They also use this technique called EMA tension. Mm -hmm. Imagine teaching the AI to focus its attention, kind of like we do when we're trying to pick out a familiar face in a crowd. Right. Aim attention helps the AI to zero in on the fruit itself, ignoring any distractions like leaves or branches in the background. Okay, that makes sense. So we've got the AI trained on thousands of images. Yes. And it's using these fancy techniques to understand what it's looking at. Right. But how do we know if it actually works? How do they measure its accuracy? Well, that's where the rubber meets the road. They put this AI to the test. And the results, well, they're pretty remarkable. You're killing me. Spill the beans. How accurate was it? Get this. This AI achieved a 90.9% .9 overall accuracy in identifying pitaya ripeness. 90.9%. Pretty impressive. That's incredible. It's especially considering, I mean, how difficult it is for even experienced humans to get it right every time. It really puts the power of this technology into perspective, yeah. but it's important to understand what that accuracy means in real world terms. Right, because a number on its own, yeah, it doesn't tell the whole story. Exactly. <laughs> What's really impressive is that this AI isn't just accurate in a controlled lab setting. Right. It can handle the unpredictable nature of real farms. So even with things like inconsistent lighting or, you know, like a, a rogue leaf obscuring the fruit. That's right. The study found it could accurately assess ripeness even from blurry images or when the fruit was partially hidden. Wow. It even stood up to the challenge of similar colored objects in the background, which can often trip up less sophisticated systems. It's like this AI has x-ray vision for perfectly ripe dragon fruit. But we've talked about this AI being lightweight. What does that actually mean? It's all about efficiency. Okay. The researchers designed this AI to have a small computational footprint. 
meaning it doesn't need a ton of processing power to do its thing. So we're not talking about needing a supercomputer in the middle of a dragon fruit farm. Not at all. This AI could potentially run on a simple device, oh. even in areas with limited technology. That's a game changer. It makes this technology accessible to farmers all over the world, regardless of their resources. Right. It's like bringing the cutting edge of AI directly to the heart of agriculture. And when you think about the potential impact, it's truly remarkable. Yeah. Imagine a world where farmers, no matter where they are, have access to this level of precision in their harvesting. Less food waste, higher quality produce, and potentially even new economic opportunities for farmers in developing regions. Precisely. Yeah. This research has opened up a world of possibilities. It really has. And while this specific study focused on Pattaya, the applications of this technology extend far beyond just dragon fruit. It really makes you wonder what other fruits or vegetables could benefit from this kind of AI-assisted ripeness detection. Yo, absolutely. Could this be the future of farming? It's certainly a tantalizing possibility. Imagine applying this technology to crops like strawberries, which are notoriously delicate and have a short window of perfect ripeness. Well, or blueberries, even. Well, what about avocados? I feel like half the battle with avocados is figuring out if they're ripe before you even buy them. Exactly. This technology could potentially revolutionize the way we harvest and distribute all sorts of produce, leading to less waste and higher quality food for everyone. It's amazing to think about the possibilities, especially when it comes to tackling those global challenges like food security and sustainability. Absolutely. Yeah. By helping farmers to optimize their harvest, we can ensure that food is being used more efficiently and less is going to waste. Right. It's about harnessing technology to create a more sustainable and abundant food system for everyone. It really is fascinating to see where this goes from here. So to our listener, we leave you with this thought. As this technology continues to evolve, what other applications can you envision? What other challenges in agriculture could be solved with a little help from AI? It's a conversation that's just getting started, and we're excited to see where it leads. Me too. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive.